Really? And you may say, well, so what? Yeah. Well, the problem is a, a horse's, one of their main motivations is eating. <laughs> and if you let a horse eat with you on the lead line, mm -hmm. he's going to want to eat whenever he's with you. Okay. Okay, so picture yourself, you're out riding in, in the, out in the fields in a wooded area, your horse reaches down and takes a bite of grass. Mm -hmm. Well, that's annoying, especially if he keeps doing it. And so you may say, well, so what? Well, if you let a horse do what he wants to do, mm -hmm. I just got through saying a minute ago that a horse is a thousand pound animal with 10 times your strength right. and reflex is lightning fast, and you're gonna let a horse do what he wants to do, um, you, you could get in big trouble. So if they reach down to, to bite a, a, a thing of grass, right. And all of a sudden they come back up and something startles them and horses can be easily startled. They may suddenly just spook and go out of control. They, they could buck on you. They could rear back on you. You might get thrown off and your horse takes off to the trailer and you got a five mile walk. And all of that started because you let him eat on the lead line, the littlest thing. So when are you supposed to let your pony eat then after the ride's over? Pony, pony can eat when he's done working. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> That's what I was doing wrong. Who knew? When he's with you, he can eat. You're the boss. <laughs> really? Okay. That's an excellent tip. And on that note, we are going to take a break. Stay with us, everybody. Leading Experts continues right after the break. Look at you. Look at you. Easy. Be gentle. Easy. Look at you. It's okay. It's okay when you have a blow up. They don't know where you want them to go, what you want them to do. We're going to take her back out and smooch her. Easy, darling. Be gentle. I'll tell you what. Me. Good. 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 And oh. You're not so mad at me anymore. Oh. Good. Welcome back to Leading Experts, everybody. I'm your host, Grayson Foster. Thanks for tuning in. My guest today is one of the superstars of horse training, Mr. Andy Curry. He's here with us today talking about he's helping people all over the world learn to ride, train, and take care of their horses. Unfortunately, you couldn't bring one of your horses with you. Couldn't get them on the plane. <laughs> yeah, I wish you could have. <laughs> all right, now you say that you show people the how and why of horse training. So tell me about what kind of results you're getting. Well, um, the results you can see from the testimonials. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, but really what I wanted to go over was, was the why of horse training. This is really important. Okay. And I'll give you an example. All right. Years and years ago when I was first learning it, I was in the round pen, and we had the horse doing his thing for about an hour, hour and a half. And the trainer says to me, okay, back off and let him snort and blow. And meaning, that, you know, just and he does his thing and is relaxed, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so it's over, he needs the rest. And so I said to him, so he just needed the rest, and he says, well, that's part of it. And I said, well, what's the other part? And then he said to me, said to me a, a funny answer, he goes, just do what I tell you. <laughs> and I think he thought that I was questioning him. Right. But what I found out later was, um, horses have a built-in fear mechanism. That's how we're able to get them to do what we do. Hmm. I mean, here's this enormous animal, Right. And, they, and they fear us, and so it doesn't take much to get a horse to move. You can push towards a horse's face and get him to move. Mm -hmm. And they call that putting pressure on your horse. Hmm. Well, after you run them around for about an hour, hour and a half, when you back off, you're taking off the pressure. And so they can relax. And they know they can relax around you. Hmm. And like I said earlier, you're on, on the back of a thousand pound animal. If they can't relax and they're skittish and they're ready to just jump out of their skin, um, that's not good. So that's why you needed to know that you can let them relax and, and kick back and snort and blow. Good boy, that's so much better. That's so much better. Good boy. Good boy. Good. I'll take him right back up to that fence and ask him to stop. Oh, that's better. Okay. Come out of there. 
I always talk to the horse before I stop them too. They need some kind of warning that you're fixing to pull on the reins that, that you want him to stop. So if you uh, have some kind of verbal cue or a cue of any kind, and they're consistent with it so he knows what we're gonna ask for. Oh, that was good. That's an example of, of why you need to know why. Okay, so you, but you actually need to get off the animal and let him do his thing and then get back on? Or you can do that while you're on Well, on the it, back it depends of where you're at in training. Okay. But um, really you just, you just need to back off and take off the pressure so they, so they don't feel like you're terrorizing them. So they just get a bit of a break. Yes. Yeah. Just like human beings. We That's need a right. bit of a break. We need a break. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, you have spent time record recording some of the best trainers in the country. Why have you taken the time and trouble and expense to do that? Why was that important to you? Well, first of all, I want horse owners to have as many tricks in their tool bag as possible. But one of the reasons I started Superstars of Horse Training was if you read the horse magazines, um, they tend to feature uh, like five or six horse trainers constantly. Right. So people get it in their mind, well, that must be how you train, how that person does it. And that's a mistake because typically um, a, what I call a celebrity horse trainer will have followers. Mm -hmm. and, and we have helped more people who have stuck with one horse trainer because they got stuck. They, they ran out of uh, ways to fix a horse, uh, their problems and such. Right. And because horses are every bit as different as you and I, mm -hmm. One technique will not work exactly the same on every horse. Right. Come here. He will follow me if I back all the way across his pen. Whoa. You back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh, you want to kneel. Back up, back up, back up. Okay, come on. Along with the horse training DVDs that you offer your clients, you also give professionally written uh, detailed notes as well. That's right. Um, when you watch a DVD for like two hours and then you go out and work with your horse, I mean, there's so much information on a DVD. Right. You, you get him saddled up and you go, now what was I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> and so you either have to run back in and try and find that spot where you needed to uh, learn what you were doing, or you can take the notes out with you. Mm -hmm. So we had the notes created, they're professionally written, you just print them out and take them with you and you don't have to go back and try and figure out where you were. Awesome. I think one of the best DVDs that you have is the one, how to ride a horse. I mean, that's just basic knowledge that you should know. You would think um, that it's basic and it has its basics, of course, but there is so much to riding a horse. Right. Now, again, this is from Sue Robertson of TripleRHorseTraining.com. Okay. We filmed her, and people are just, just really enthusiastic about this DVD. Mm -hmm. um, you would be shocked at the amount of things that you really need to do to ride your horse correctly. And, and if you've ever been riding out on a trail for, you know, half a day or or even go riding for an hour and you feel beat up, mm -hmm. um, chances are you're not riding your horse correctly. Mm. And the problem with that is it's also dangerous. So you really need to know how to ride a horse correctly. Okay, I'm ordering that one right after the show. Okay. Shop. Okay, <laughs> good. And you also offer a free horseman community. So what do you get once you sign up with your horseman community? Okay, when you come to the site, um, you'll see the words community at the top. Right, okay. And you click on there and you just sign up and, you, and it's free. Mm -hmm. And you get your own little blog space. You can upload pictures. You can talk with people all over the world. Great. Um, the site is monitored, so people who do things a little risque that they shouldn't do okay. are told, you know, they're warned off. or kicked off. Right. Um, but it, it's interesting from all the people that you can meet on there. Mm -hmm. um, I met a gentleman who is a cowboy in the second biggest ranch in Texas. His name is Donald Burt. Hmm. And he makes, he's an expert guy at making leather, um, saddles, tacks, belts, buckles. I have some of his stuff on right here. And when I want stuff handmade, he's the one I go to. And by the way, his ID on the community is uh, Big Ranch, if anybody wants to know. Okay, perfect. Uh, one of the things that we haven't talked about yet is the fact that you did take that Jesse Berry horse trainer's manual from the 1800s and you revived it and republished it. Um, what is what kinds of advice did you find from that time that is still applicable today?